I've got one study that uh, won't take me too long to whip through. This is actually hot off the press. It's actually a very long-term study. There's been results published over a few different years looking at different things. Really, really interesting. It's looking, this latest study was reporting on the effects of resistant starch on the development of cancer. So resistant starch, just to kind of refresh everyone's mind, is a type of carbohydrate that is not digested by us, passes through to the large intestine, and is digested by the microbes. And for that reason, resistant starch is considered a prebiotic, just like polyphenols. Well, most polyphenols are also prebiotic in nature and prebiotic fiber. So if you think about prebiotics, the way I like to think about it is that prebiotics is an umbrella term. And underneath that, you have these three classes, polyphenols, prebiotic fiber, like inulin, and then resistant starch. And some folks may have heard about potatoes. If you cook them and then you cool them, you actually uh, increase the amount of resistant starch in them. Mm -hmm. It's a neat little trick. Um, Anyway, so this paper, this was a randomized controlled trial uh, back, I think, 1996 it started. And it was looking at almost 1,000 people who had a syndrome called Lynch syndrome. And this is a, a hereditary condition that predisposes you to developing colorectal cancer and a bunch of other types of cancer. So a really interesting group of people to study to see if you give them something, can you reduce their risk of developing this cancer that they are much more likely to develop than the average person. Mm-hmm. And they they were interested in, there were some hypotheses about resistant starch and the effect that it might have on the development of colorectal cancer, also aspirin. Um, so they tested both of those. They had a, a randomized process, and this was conducted across the world. I think uh, 43 different clinics around the world did this. It was double-blind placebo. And so there was resistant starch, aspirin, or a placebo pill, right? You didn't know which one you were given. Mm-hmm. And you, they, they were given these um, you know, supplements, whichever one that they were randomized to, for about a five-year period, okay? and really, really well thought out, the researchers decided to follow up those subjects over at least a 10-year period. I believe they're still following um, the ones that are still alive afterwards because it might be that the, the taking resistant starch or aspirin might not have an effect on cancer for many years to come. It might not show in the actual period of the study so itself. So five-year intervention. Five-year intervention. And then 10 years And then they stopped. After that. They stopped taking it, right? Right, And then they did a 10-year follow-up, which is what I've got in front of me. So I have a 10-year follow-up looking at what happened to these people in terms of their development, risk of developing cancer 10 years later. Mind you, they didn't continue, right? Remember, they didn't know what they were taking. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, you know, Drew, you're in the study, you're taking resistant starch, and at the end I tell you, you were taking resistant starch, and, you know, off you go and you decide to keep taking it. You didn't know. You were blinded. Yeah. It was in a pill form. You weren't like I was eating about a say, green can, banana or something. Is it possible that people ate resistant starch unknowingly in their diet? Well, they might, but because they're randomized, you'd expect you that to be evenly gotcha. distributed, right? Yep. So this is a an exposure to something over and above diet. Got it. And you would expect in a group where you randomize that the the kind of diets are um, similar. Right, you, you've controlled for that. Yeah. So um, what's r- just amazingly fascinating is that at this 10-year follow-up period, they found that those who were randomized to the resistant starch group had a 60% reduction in cancer incidence. And right? they started with the same relative risk? They, that- this was just a group of people yeah. with Lynch syndrome who were randomized okay. to the three groups. Wow. Right. So again, the way randomization works is if it's done correctly, that you have an even distribution of people in each group, yep. Yep. Um, you know, age, BMI, any risk, other risk factors, smoking, alcohol consumption, all of that, right? Which is one of the benefits of a randomized controlled trial over epidemiology, even yep. though you, you can sort of adjust for some of that stuff. So they had this strikingly large reduction. It wasn't actually colorectal cancer. It was the upper digestive tract cancers where they had saw these big reductions in, mm. in risk. And there, there are kind of some proposed mechanisms that maybe can help explain it. I think the researchers said, they said here, we think that resistant starch may reduce cancer development by changing the bacterial metabolism of bile acids and to reduce those types of bile acids that can damage our DNA and eventually cause cancer. However, 
this needs further research. Mm. But this is just another really uh, sort of big tick for a, a, a plant-rich, whole plant food-based diet where, you know, foods that are rich in resistant starch are things like oats and barley, all of your legumes, um, rice, potatoes, as I said, particularly if you take rice or potatoes and you cook them and then let them cool, you have increasing amount of resistant starch in them. And there's a, a name for that process. I think it's um, starch re- retrogradation, okay. I think is, is what it's called. I can put a link to one of the papers in there, but I looked up one of the papers because I was interested. Well, if you cool the potato and then you cook it again. Does it get more resistant starch? Or, or does it go back? Well, what if it cools twice? It doesn't. Um, well, I'm not sure, but that's a good question. If you cook it again and then yeah. let it cool. I didn't see a paper that looked at that, but I did look at one that that cooked it, cooled it, and then looked at the amount of resistant starch in it, cooked it again, and if you because if, if you wanted to heat your food and yeah, eat it, yeah. and it didn't change it, you, you still you still yeah. had the increased okay. um, amount, which is you know really really interesting. Essentially, what happens is when you cook it, you take that carb a carbohydrate that is digestible, yeah. and it changes its form okay. into an indigestible carbohydrate, which becomes a resistant starch. Interesting. And if you were recommending uh, to people, how much, how many times per week would you okay. try? Well, this study starch? was giving people a supplement of resistant starch, which was equivalent to having one green banana a day. Okay. So, like, a, you, you obviously know what a green banana is, right? Right. When you buy them, which is really, <laughs> this makes me laugh. This makes me laugh a lot because I saw Paul Saladino. He did a video saying that green bananas are toxic because of resistant starch. So if uh, if a 60% reduction in cancer is risk toxic. is toxic. considered I'll toxic, yeah. perhaps toxic isn't such a bad thing at all. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, that is quite funny. So a green banana a day. All right, that's not right. that much. Like if you think about it, and well, you know, it doesn't have to be Anyone who's banana, eating a whole food plant-based diet you're getting is getting it. that much resistant starch because oats, barley, rice, all of your legumes, these are all providing resistant starch. What if they're not um, cooled though? They still contain they still have a fair it. bit. Okay. Um, but I do think having some some uh, potatoes that have been cooled is, sure. you know, is a, is a great idea if you like them, work them in. This is not a, a study that I'm kind of highlighting, which is going to radically change many of the listeners' diet, sure. but it's it's helping explain, I think, why I think it's interesting is that we see diets like Mediterranean diet, for example, which has arguably the most research on it. Time and time again, you see that that style of diet, which is very rich in plants, is associated with reduced risk of cancer. Mm-hmm. And there are going to be many reasons. It's not that it's just resistant starch. Think about all of the polyphenols sure. and other compounds that are are in plant foods, but this is just highlighting. It's just interesting that a study looked just at resistant starch and found such a significant effect. Yeah. So I think that's neat. I'll I'll link to that into the uh, the show notes. So you think throwing a green banana in a smoothie would be an easy way to do it as well, right? Like because green bananas don't taste that good. Let's be honest. Yeah. They're furry. They're kind of a funny yeah. texture. But I imagine you could mask it in a smoothie quite easily. Right. Throw some berries in there. Something sweet. I don't yeah. know, maybe a ripe banana and a green banana. Mm. If you, you do that, unless you want to, unless you're scared of too much fructose. I so. agree. I think that I think it, the the green bananas are you know they're not my idea no. of a mind you. You can get really supplement, enjoyable green banana snack. supplement, right? You can get the resistant powder. starch powder, right? That's get available that um, most places. That's awesome. Cool study. Mm. So what was that sixty percent reduction in in cancer risk? That's solid. They took it for six years, yeah, and then they stopped. And they stopped, and ten years later they had this. Improved. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Love it. 